In this video, we're going to talk about variable compensation. For example, when is variable compensation useful? When isn't it useful? I think I'm going to learn a whole lot starting right now. Hi there, I'm Andrea Adams and the host of HR Shop Talk. On this show, you get expert insight into all things HR. I encourage you to subscribe to the show by clicking on the button at the bottom of the screen or subscribe to the podcast where you can continue to get expert insight from my smart guests. Today, my guest is David Pan. David is a leader in global compensation and analytics. David started out in consulting, but has most recently been working in mining and shipping. Welcome, David. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Andrea? I'm I'm good. I'm good. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be useful. So I know in our other conversation, we digressed before the conversation even started, but let us not do that. Let us dive right in. <laughs> there we go. Uh, what are the key principles of good incentive-based compensation? Yeah, so I guess uh, the way I'm going to, first of all, think about this question is I'm going to sort of narrow down this incentive-based compensation maybe to uh, bonus, because um, I think that will be applicable, first of all, and if we want to get into equity compensation, we can we can um, do that as well. But when I think about key principles to a good bonus program, um, the first thing that comes to mind is you really need to uh, be able to articulate and the employees need to really understand uh, what triggers or what performance targets there are in a bonus program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, what an incentive program is there to do is to incentivize certain behavior or certain mm -hmm. results, yes. right? And so um, you would think that it's a given that anyone would understand their bonus program, but I can say from my past experiences, that's not always the case. And so when you have a bonus program where people don't actually know what the goals and targets are, you can imagine that it's not quite effective, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to drive a certain behavior, but the employees don't even know that, yeah, yeah, they're obviously not incentivized to do that, right? So For sure. again, first and foremost, um, a good communication around uh, clear targets, uh, clear understanding of um, the goals within those targets mm -hmm. um, is, is key, um, but it is not a given. Around bonuses, is it typical for that to be partly driven by the organization achieving its goals as well as the individual achieving their goals or the group that that individual is part of? Yeah. So again, this goes back to this um, I, uh, the importance of compensation philosophy where we talked about last time. And yeah, yeah. Uh, your compensation philosophy will affect um, uh, the way you design your bonus program. Uh, so it is very common for individuals to have a corporate components mm -hmm. and also an individual component. Uh, but I've also been in organizations in the past where it was all corporate and all business unit and there were no individual components mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And and so that was actually a very interesting um, scenario because there were a lot of uh, reasons that uh, we did that. and. There were a lot of reasons to do that, um, but there were also a lot of challenges with that too. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that there is no right or wrong way to do it, mm -hmm. um, but it goes back to what is your compensation philosophy? What is your business trying to drive? And mm -hmm. that will determine, you know, the weightings between corporate, business unit, individual. Mm -hmm. Okay, so instead of pay is used to motivate people to some end, like the bonuses we talked about, maybe as an organization, maybe as an individual, but I assume that it doesn't work equally on everyone. So who are incentive, incentives good for and who aren't suitable for an incentive? Right, so at, at the end of the day, um, I would look at it in a way of who are those individuals in your company that have a large variance in their output mm -hmm. and that can affect the company in a significant way, okay. right? So if you have um, an uh, a position where there's not a lot of variance perhaps in an individual's performance in that role, and yeah. at the end of the day, it doesn't significantly impact the business, it's probably mm -hmm. less 
likely you need to put in a bonus program for that individual versus someone who, whether they perform well or not, has a significant impact on business results. Great. Now, having said that, um, bonus programs um, are also a way for employees to feel included um, in company okay. success. Yeah. And so aside from the notion of whether putting a program in place makes sense for the business from the perspective of the end result or the performance, yeah. there's also this idea of inclusion and also having individuals personally invested in a way into company success. So even right. if you are an individual that may not play a huge part in, in, uh, in the bottom line of a company yeah. at the end of the day, if the company's philosophy is we want all our employees to feel valued at this organization, it would make a lot of sense to put in a bonus program, even for those those positions as well. So you we've already we've already been talking about bonuses, but what other um, forms of incentive pay are there? Yeah, so other forms of incentive pay, uh, I would think, um, you know, aside from bonuses, you know, in the sales environment, you have okay. commission. Right. Yeah. And, and that's a direct link. There's also other forms of bonus, I, I guess you can say, um, like profit sharing, where a company okay. takes a percentage of the profits and divides it equally among yeah. their employees. And um, aside from what I would call that bucket short term incentive, there are long term incentives like equity plans. Okay. And, okay. you know, typically you would see these in sort of two scenarios. You would see them more in uh, for large organizations, you probably see them in more senior roles. Um, okay. They would give okay. sort of, a, in, in a sense, indirectly a piece of the company, right? So that um, those individuals with long-term incentive, they're directly impacted by the share price performance of the organization. And, and again, in a way, own a little piece of, of, of the pie, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, another scenario that's very common is for uh, startup organizations that um, they may not have a lot of cash on hand to offer a competitive uh, base salary, yeah. but um, they can offer a, a piece of the company to employees at all levels, um, sort of in, in a way where if the company succeeds, there's a large mm -hmm. payout. And mm -hmm. I've worked with um, clients in the past um, that IPO'd and, you know, their lowest tiered positions had million dollar payouts because of the shares that they, they wow. own. So, yeah. um, you know, it can be, can be very, very um, uh, attractive. If you found this helpful, subscribe to see all the episodes and comment. Is there an episode you would like me to do? Another topic you'd like me to cover? Let me know in the comment section below. Back to you, David. So incentive compensation might reward favorites, or there's that perception that it rewards favorites. Um, how do you manage that? Yeah. Yeah. So just going back to uh, one of the reasons perhaps you want to remove that individual component out of bonuses is oh. you want to foster that environment of team performance. And it's not right. about the individual, right? And right. it's not about individual stardom, but it's about team success. Um, and, and another uh, aspect of that is what you mentioned just now. There is, uh, unfortunately, an issue of when, when it is very subjective, um, it lends itself to uh, biases. And we know that we all have biases. And yeah. it's, it's not something that we can get away from. And so I guess a, a plug for why perhaps organizations would move away from individual uh, uh, individual performance uh, would be exactly sort of around that. Hmm. Again, not saying that it is the, the right thing to do for all organizations. Again, there's pros and cons to different approaches, mm -hmm. uh, but I thought I'd, I'd just mention that uh, uh, as a start. At the end of the day, I don't think you can move away from the qualitative aspect of individual bonus. You can make it as quantitative as possible, but in uh, most organizations, that will be quite impossible for 
yeah. for all yeah. employees. Yeah. And if you were to do it, it would be a lot of work. Like if you were to think about, let's say, um, an HR manager and trying to put quantitative goals around that. I mean, I'm not going to say it's not doable because it yeah. certainly can be, but it will it will take a lot of effort. And yeah. the other thought that I have is typically when you set these targets at the beginning of the year, Companies are so uh, fluid now that the company situation can be totally different by the end of the year. So you yeah. you not only face a challenge of setting those goals, but making those goals relevant throughout the year without hindering true mm-hmm. progress. Because at the end of the day, you do not want to diminish the fluidity of, of yeah. companies, right? Yeah. There are times where it makes sense to change your game plan mid-year mm-hmm or your focus mid-year uh, because of a particular event. Mm-hmm. And you obviously don't want to incentivize anything away from that. You're totally right. You want those incent- that incentive pay to remain relevant and to drive the right behaviors. I don't know how many times in my career I've heard examples of um, incentives driving the wrong behavior that led to a less effective organization. Mm-hmm. How do you make sure that your incentives are driving the behavior you want? Right. So this is, it goes back to the question that you had. I mean, to me, it's really about being flexible with your um, goals and having conversations throughout the year um, around goal setting. So that it's not just a once a year thing, right? So that when there is some change in the organization, um, the manager and the employees have already discussed um, on a consistent basis how that affects, you know, their focus for the year. Performance development, performance planning, um, these things should not be a once once in a year sort of discussion and and especially how it ties to compensation. Like mm-hmm. there should really should be no surprises at the end of the year for any individuals of what their bonus is. But what I will say, and this again ties back to your your original question, in that in that um, flexibility, oftentimes you would introduce the qualitative aspect. And of course, mm-hmm. if you were qualitative in your assessment of an individual's performance, it goes back to the issue of it's very subjective to yeah. biases. Yeah. And so um, one thing that um, I, I've certainly have done in, in the last, uh, in the companies that I've worked with, is uh, calibration meetings and where the leaders will go into a room and they will talk about the individuals and their ratings and make sure that there's some sort of calibration across um, the the teams. Mm -hmm. Now, um, just having a calibration meeting itself will not solve all the issues. You need to be able to develop trust, honest conversations and, and all those things but it is a good step towards right. um, trying to achieve, you know, a more consistent evaluation, I guess, of performance right. across. The- and manage um, bias, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so how do you manage expectations around incentive compensations? After a while, you know, every year I get a bonus, I get a bonus, and then all of a sudden, and then it, in their minds, becomes part of base pay. How do yeah. you manage that? Yeah, that is a really, really good question. And it's something I think a lot of companies face. Um, this hesitancy uh, to um, um, not only not reward bonus, but if people are so used to, let's say, target bonus every year, mm-hmm. the, this hesitancy to um, give anything below that. To, to solve this, it's really all around the culture that you're building, the culture that you have. And it's really easy especially if year over year you're offering, you know, sort of target bonus, it can easily become the expectation, yeah. right? And so what it, it really needs to come down to is, first of all, the communication around it. Mm-hmm. And second of all, people need to be also accountable um, to not to fault to, well, we've never given lower bonuses in the past, so let's just do this. Because right. then at the end of the day, um, you're not allowing uh, the system to be accountable for what it needs to be accountable for. Now, again, we're talking theory and there's mm-hmm. that introduces a whole a lot of difficulties and things that need to be worked through. Yeah. But in my mind, um, as a compensation expert, I would love to see organizations through clear communication, through clear trust with their employees, build an environment where 
um, there really is that pay for performance um, culture where people understand that if you perform, you're going to be paid more. And if you don't, you get paid less. And I, I, I'd say it's, it's not an easy thing to do, yeah. um, but it all comes down to being account- leaders being accountable and, and allowing the system itself to be accountable uh, for the way it was designed. Final question here. So what is the thing that organizations get wrong most often around incentive pay? What comes to mind? Yeah, so I, I think it's two things we talked about today. First of all, I will say what we just talked about, um, not allowing the plan to play out the way it's intended. And, right. And, and instilling that pay for performance philosophy, mm-hmm. right? And, and the second thing that I, I think most uh, organizations get wrong most often is communicating the actual goals, right? And so again, I've been part of organization I've seen in the past where uh, people actually don't know how their bonus is calculated oh, and yeah. what targets the, the, the bonus um, actually has in it like what are the goals and so throughout the year you have an individual sort of performing and at the end of the year they get this bonus but they have no clue in how to make that number higher or lower they're Mm -hmm. kind of just going with the flow but again a bonus program is really intends to uh, drive certain behaviors or drive certain results and so I think it's really important that employees really know what are the behaviors and what are the results that the companies actually trying to pay me to do, I think is, is critical. Thanks, David. I love that. It's basically because of how much I learned listening to that and how much I was reminded of in the challenge and difficulties of compensation programs. I did another episode with David on base pay and that episode is shown right beside me. Thanks for watching and see you next time.